have a great coach on the line with us right now from South Carolina, the Gamecocks. Being K State, names of the Gamecocks, they're 21 and 5 on the season. Joined by Coach Frank Martin on the show. Coach Martin, glad to have you back on with, with us today, Coach. How are things in Columbia today? Well, I'll tell you what, that temperature got up over 70 degrees, and it made me feel a lot better about the way we played the last couple times out. Oh, I hear that, Coach. And you've been a Miami guy. I know that 70 degree weather makes you feel real, real nice. I like the warm, cold, cold, cold air hurts, man. I, I like that warm air. I once it warms up, it puts me in good spirits. Hey, man, you both, Coach. Well, Coach, I want to tell you, we've been watching your team this year. We're happy for your team this year. Twenty-one wins already on the season, Coach. And for you, in your mind, what has been the key point in your mind for your team's improvement of this year? Winning twenty-one games, playing well most of the season. I got a tough game against Missouri the other night, but still, your guys are in good position. What's been the thing for you this year, Coach, with you and your guys? Yeah, we we you know we've got a group of guys that, that's been around each other for a while, and they've been through it all, and uh, they 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 haven't run away from the difficult times and. Uh, you know, we've all gotten better because of them, um, and uh, and this year we we've taken advantage of all those lessons and figured out a way to win win some games. And you know, it's uh, when you're in the moment, it's hard to to enjoy because you're so wrapped up on your last game, your last performance. But uh, but I'm extremely proud of our guys. You know, 21 wins. Uh, we you know we got five games left in the season. Uh, we've got a lot to play for, a lot of possibilities and opportunities that. Uh, that we've earned because of uh, the work that our guys have put in. So uh, rather than dwell on a, a bad day, uh, bad, you know, two, three days, uh, we're, we're going to invest all the energy we can in a positive way uh, to, to depend on who we've become over the course of the season, and, and that's a pretty good team. And, Coach, who are the guys in your mind has been leaders for you on and off the court to help this transition this year? Because, Coach, I know you guys had some young guys when you first got out there. You had some struggles. But now this year with a guy like Carrera, who are some other guys on your team you will say has helped you and your staff be able to say, hey, this is this is our basketball here. This is how we'll do it on and off the court. Who are some of those guys you do want to shout out here on the show today, Coach? Yeah, there's four guys that have really, really just – been rock they've been rocks uh, as far as how consistent they've been and their mentality and, and just everything and michael carreras and darius doing well uh, they've been the guys that have been more outspoken uh that that lead with their mouths and their examples and then there's two other guys and Dwayne notice and mendogas catchiness who who uh, uh they they just come in every single day and they're positive and they compete and they help the young guys uh, those four guys have been uh, uh, the, the basically the guys that we built our programs around and and through, and uh, uh, and they've they've taken on that responsibility because that's that's a big responsibility is wanting to to accept the uh, you know what comes with being a good player and and, and opening your mouth, which is means that uh, you know you got that means you have to do things the right way because if not the other guys won't listen to you. Those four guys have been great. Oh, yes, Coach. And I can only imagine how Carrera – I watched him against when you played Tennessee. It was a rough game for you guys up there in Knoxville, but the guy that's kept you in the game, making tough shots, a play here or there, you could have turned the game around. But just his will, even though it was rough, a rough day, he just played so hard, and the guys followed him. I was like, wow, this is what Coach Martin was talking about last year on the show, how having guys who want to play play hard no matter what, and just fight, fight, fight. And in his Tennessee game, he did that for you guys. Uh, absolutely. He, uh, you know, he's in a stretch of games right now where he's played the best basketball in his career. And, uh, uh, he's, he's played real well. And, and, uh, and, and that's good. That's the way seniors should do things. They, they should elevate their play and, and play better as the year gets old. And, uh, and that's what he's done. And, uh, you know, he fought that game against Tennessee and, 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 uh, he, he goes out and always, you know, he leaves it on the court. He, he doesn't, he doesn't bring any enthusiasm or energy back in the locker room after the game. It's uh, he, he leaves it all on the court, and, uh, and that's why he's been such a uh, you know motivational uh, person for us in our locker room for our team is because of that courage and enthusiasm that he plays with every day. Folks, we're joined by Frank Martin here on the Boston Man Show. And, Coach, we've had some rule changes this year, Coach, for us, the fouling and 30-second shot clock. And I just want to ask you, have the rules – this year changed the way you coach your guys on defense for us, the hand-checking rules, and has the clock made you move faster or, or is no problem for you? And if you could, Coach, 
are there some rules you want to have changed next year? Could you not lay it out for this year? Because I've been asking all my coaches who come on the show, like, next year, what things you want to see the committee maybe tweak next year going forward? Well, the, the, we're, we're, uh, the rules are only allowed uh, to be changed every other year okay. unless there's a special exception. And as of right now that I heard of, there's nothing that's going to be created as a special exception for this coming year. So the rules will stay intact. Um, the hand checking, I, you know, it's that's the, the everyone has made a big deal about hand checks. Hand checks have always been called. Um, you know, 20 years ago, that you know, like when Isaiah Thomas and those guys played, all right, that it was never called. That's why those guys, the stuff they did then was so incredible. Uh, but in college basketball, hand checking's always been called. What has not been called has been, you know, the guys off the ball when a guy's cutting, people chucking him and grabbing him and and moving ball screens and things like that. But that's those are the things that are being called this year, and uh, and it needs to be called because uh, that's that's where that that's where you have problems because you're trying to go set a screen or you're trying to use a screen, and guys are grabbing you and chucking you and stuff, and you can't move. Uh, mm-hmm. So so that's where it's being called at, and, and rightfully so. Um, and then the the shot clock, I, I, the shot clock has not helped scoring at all. Uh, only thing it's done right, scoring is up about five points a game. But the game is also up five possessions a game, which is a point per possession, which is average. Uh, so uh, it hasn't helped scoring. Uh, all I've done, it's, it's created more possessions. Scoring's the same. Uh, what we have to do is stop worrying about the shot clock, and we got to figure out a way to teach the game so kids understand how to screen, how to cut, how to use screens, how to pass, how to feed the post, uh, You know, make the pass that leads to an assist, those little things. Uh, that's what makes this game beautiful and stop worrying about shot clocks and, and, and you know, and get guys to shoot more balls. Exactly, Coach. And I'm going to tell you something. Watching the games I watched this year in person and on TV, I still see a lot of holding the ball for 25 seconds, a, a high screen, and a, a, a long three and a bad shot. You know, there's still no free flowing, as you say, Coach, no cutting. You know, just as, it's still one on one ball for the most part. I'm going to hold the ball 20 seconds or so, get a screen, and get, try to get the shot off. And I like free flowing, like, Go, the basketball that the Warriors play, Coach, in the NBA, that's why I love to watch. I love to see it all over all levels, that level of passing and sharing the ball, having a great time on the court. Everybody shares the ball because the ball is energy. And if you, everybody gets the ball, everybody's happy. Then they want, want to defend and want to play for each other. So that's what I want to see, Coach. Yeah, it's, uh, that's that's what makes basketball beautiful. It's uh, In the NBA, I love watching the NBA. I love watching teams that play like Golden State like uh, the the Lakers did with Phil Jackson, the Pat Riley teams, where teams actually pass the ball and they screen and they cut. Uh, this 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 whole thing that, you know, when you watch these teams play, you know, the Atlanta Hawks now, they, they're, they're fun to watch. They, they play basketball the right way. These teams that just kind of stand around and dribble the ball, it's the greatest players in the world. And it's hard to watch when one guy dribbles the ball the whole clock and then there's one ball screen and then some shot off the dribble. Um, you know, I understand there's times in games where that's what happens, but to see that every single possession, uh, that, that makes it hard to watch. That's, and, uh, that, that's not the, the, that's not the kind of basketball that's been played. That's made this sport, the great sport that it is that people have always loved watching. And coach, I'm going to tell you, I feel real lucky to be able to watch the Hawks every night here in Atlanta, get to go get to be at the games and watch just how coach Bud has those guys playing it's be like you said, it's beautiful to watch, Coach. And I'm so glad that Al Horford didn't get traded today. It's one of my buddies. I'm glad he didn't get traded today. I'm happy for that as well. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, San Antonio, and that's where you know Coach came from, and, and it, that's how the games played. And if you look at the teams that win, that's how they play. You look at teams that just dribble it around and shoot balls without ever running any offense or cutting or passing or screening. Uh, they usually uh, don't win. And and, and listen. Any player that plays like Al Horford does and speaks Spanish, he's a winner in my book. Amen to that, Coach. Amen to that, Coach. <laughs> hey, Coach, I'll tell you what. A lot of pundits have been telling me the SEC is down this year. They're not very good. And I tell the pundits who ask me on their shows, Coach, hey, 
This conference from top to bottom is a rough night every night. There are no cupcakes in the SEC, Coach. And do you feel like a lot of national pundits are look, overlooking the conference ends of weak conference and not seeing how the conference from top to one to 14, you can be beat any night, and all the teams have great players and great coaches that where, where these guys are ready to play each night, and you can't have an easy night in this conference at all? Oh, it's this league. When, when I came into the league four years ago, yes, there were about four programs that were in transition. We were one of them. Uh, that that just just weren't good enough, and uh, but all those programs have moved forward. All those programs have grown, and and uh, you know the top of the league is still very good. The bottom of the league's gotten a lot better. The middle of the league's gotten a lot better. Uh, the conference is unbelievable right now. It's uh, uh, if you look at the scores of every game, they're coming down to the last two minutes of the game. That's how even and how competitive this league is, and. Um, you know, it's a hey, Kentucky. Let's use them because they're a first place in our league. You know, they've lost four, three or four conference games. I'm not sure what the number is, but you know, people say, oh, they can't be very good if they lost three games. Well, they beat everyone that they played in non-league play. Yeah. They lost, uh, at Kansas in overtime a couple weeks ago. Uh, but you know, they beat Louisville, they beat Duke, they, you know, and it's, uh, um, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a heck of a league. It's got very good coaches in it. Uh, it's had more players drafted in the NBA than any other league in the conference over the last 10 years. Um, you know, and uh, top to bottom, it's it's an absolute rock fight every single night. You've got there, right, Coach. And coming up Saturday, Coach, you play the Florida Gators and Coach Michael White. He's been doing a lot of great things. I saw them play Vanderbilt real tough against Kevin and his guys. And, Coach, they come off a win against Georgia. So, if I give it too much away, what have you seen from them guys on the film to say that you're going to be looking out for on Saturday when you play those guys at, in Columbia on Saturday? Yeah, well, yeah, Mike's Mike's uh, Mike's done an unbelievable job uh, in uh, in what the the way he's got that team playing and, and how good they are defensively. They're so long, so athletic, and, and and they're just good. They're they're in the right place. They don't get out of the way. They compete. They play together. And then on offense, uh, <laughs> excuse me, on offense they they continue to evolve and grow. They they got a true center in John Abuno. He's he's a load in there. Uh, they they um, uh, they've got a freshman in Allen uh, who just offensively is when he starts going it's hard to stop him and then they get real real good uh, and then they've got Dorian Finney Smith a fifth year senior that that just knows how to play and 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 he's been a mainstay in this conference for three years and um, it's uh, they, they they you know and then obviously all the other pieces whether it's Devin Robinson or the kid Leon. Uh, Mike's done an incredible job uh, they they really really defend they really rebound. And offensively, they continue to get better. And uh, and on nights uh, kind of like us, on nights where that jump shot's going in, uh, then they become a very good basketball team. Well, Coach, I'll definitely be pulling for you guys Saturday day, Coach. Just believe that. And I, when I get to Nashville, Coach, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Hopefully you can have lunch when you get in town, Coach. And I'll be cheering for the game, Cox, as always, Coach. You got it, man. My pleasure being with you. And we'll definitely do that lunch. All right, Coach. Take, take, take it easy, Coach. You have a good one, man. All right, bro. All right. Folks, Coach Frank Martin on the Boss Man Show. Coming up next, Tonya Moore covering Atlanta Hawks next after the break. Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathletics.com consulting.com once again www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L Williams 24 or you can call me at 404 542 
1-800-242-6607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. It's that new way. Future Hendrix. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Hey. What's up? Back in the Boss Man Show. Talk to my man Frank Martin of South Carolina. Now we'll be talking to another person we like to have on the show. She is hails from Gainesville, Florida. Now when ATL used to do her thing, the Thug Thizzle. So Tony Alive is what she got coming up real soon. We know that coming up for show. We joined by her for the first time this year. Without John, as always, so Tony Moore on the show. That's good. <laughs> Hi, JR. How are you, darling? This is our first time getting together this yeah. year. And where is John? John is currently on assignment right now. Oh, okay. Covering the Cavs deadline. But he, he told me a trade that happened, Satonia, that the Cavs got Channing Fry from the Magic, and they sent Anderson Varejao to Portland. And they also had to give the Magic Jerry Cunningham, who they will cut him, for some salary cap relief and to get them some nice shooting on the floor to help their front line. But, Tony, the thing about this, Tony, is this. That's not going to help you beat Golden State having Channing Fry. I'm sorry. No, no, that's not going to happen. And and what did Golden State do in anything? Nothing. Shield. I, <laughs> <laughs> if it isn't broke, they'll try to fix it, right? Like, they're probably the only team that didn't make any moves at all. Laughing at fools. <laughs> Completely. Like, we're good. The bench is good. Our starting five is good. Like, they made no adjustment. That that speaks volumes. It absolutely does. And and it's crazy because even with all of the trades that have been going on, nobody is going to be able to handle them. Like, they are history in the making. Exactly. I agree with that. And the Cavs. Championship a bust. It's going to be a bust no matter what you do. Uh, they was talking about Kevin Love trading him. Nothing came from that. He'll probably get moved this summer. So will Dwight Howard. The Rockets did not trade him. The Bucks wanted to get Dwight Howard, but he had to opt into it last year's deal. He wouldn't do it, so the Bucks would not pull the trigger on that deal. So Dwight Howard stays in Houston. But a malcontent did get traded. Markeith Morris traded to the Wizards for a for first round pick and Kim K's ex boo, Chris Humphreys. Oh, Chris Humphreys yeah, that's two right? sons for Markeith Morris, the malcontent Morris twin, who kicks ass out there in Phoenix. Oh my! Oh my gosh! You know now that that surprises me because I thought he was doing pretty well, but. Um, Howard, the Rockets, that also surprises me because I just knew for sure that they were getting rid of him. It seemed the only person that they were dead smack keen on keeping was um, Harden. <laughs> I thought Howard would be packing his bags and possibly coming to Orlando, or not Orlando, to Atlanta, but that didn't happen. Exactly. Exactly. And also, we had this move right here. The Thunder trade Steve Novak and DJ Augustine away to the Nuggets for Randy Foy to be a third point guard. Oh, wow. So, now, that's interesting. And then what happened with um, 
also out in L.A. What happened with the Clippers? They made some changes with the Grizzlies, Yes, right? I'm in Memphis for this today. It's trading line today in Memphis. I'm here in Memphis today to tell you that the Grizzlies made another trade, folks. Trading Jeff Green was played very up and down, very erratic, if you ask me. For Lance Stevenson, who, guess what he does? Plays an erratic and up and down for, in a first round from the Clippers. <laughs> so, Jeff Green, we nice, really nice with Doc Rivers out there. And so he won't get beat up by my man, Blake Griffin, hopefully, allegedly, probably, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's all pray. But it's funny because everyone seems to be excited about the changes that the Grizzlies made. A lot of tweets were coming up and people were like, man, I will be glued to the set watching the rest of the Grizzly season. So it should be interesting. That locker room will be some kind of tough. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, they, they've traded for the Bird man, Chris Anderson. P.J. Harrison from the Hornets. Trade for him. Trade for get Lance Stevenson. And you already have on your roster Mario Chalmers, Matt Barnes, and Zebo. I would love to be there. They're allowed yeah, locker room. I can't wait for March 19th to go see the Grizzly game. I got to see what's going on. That it's going to be going hard down in Memphis. Oh, my God. It's, it's hard out here. I love for me some Birdman, though. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. So. The Grizzlies getting rugged. And Tony Allen, too. They got seven dudes who don't care. They they just don't care. <laughs> that is the grimiest team yeah, in the league right now. A lot there. of bad circulating. <laughs> it's going down in Memphis on Bill Street. But that's a perfect Memphis team, though. Seven grimy dudes. First 48 for life. Orange Mound, <laughs> North Memphis, South Memphis. It's going down in the dim. It's going down in the dim. You are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? One thing they will have is a lot of toughness. Like, Boy. Teams will be afraid to play the Grizzlies from here on out. That team will go. No no hard fouls from the Grizzlies. No looking them off the wrong way. <laughs> right. might take an L. Quickly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You Taking are crazy. An L. Another trade. It's a good trade for Detroit. They traded for Tobias Harris. who's on a good contract. Four years and $64 million according to Basketball Insiders right now. That's his contract for Ilion Ilyasova wow. and Brandon Jennings. So the Magic get two guys on inspiring contracts, help them with their salary cap space this summer, and Stan is going to get him a good stretch four to run his four out one in offense with Andre Drummond for the Pistons, who could make a playoff run if they get in at the eight, seven, or six seed this year. Yeah. Now that that they're going to be real strong with that little matchup right there, real strong, real strong. And now, how much do you think the cap will make a difference with all the guys that are going to be becoming um, free agents this summer? Well, think about this: a lot of teams will have cap space. It's going to, the cap will be at ninety-two million dollars next year. A lot of teams will have space right. to sign a max player, so it's going to be a lot of money to be thrown around this summer. It's going to be wild in July. And then you know, um, it's interesting though because I, you know, all of that talk that was, you know, encircling Jeff Teague and Al Horford, and it looks like they stayed right where they are, which is a smart move. Yes, the Hawks. What they traded. Uh, Joven Mack, Justin Holiday. For number 12, so this, Kirk Heinrich. <laughs> yeah. As, yeah. As some bald guy says at the, at the arena. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. You know? So this should be interesting. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how he blends with the chemistry. Well, you know, Kirk Heinrich was one of, of Woody's boys. So I, there's not too mm-hmm. many of Woody's boys left other than Al Horford. All these are Buds guys. Yeah. yeah. So, and speaking of um, Al Horford, man, he is a free agent this summer. Like he's going to get the max highest. Yes, him. but he values that fifth year, so that tells me he'll be with the Atlanta Hawks. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you will hear number fifteen, Al Horford, boss. <laughs> I can do that job. I think. <laughs> You could. You could. Shout out to Ryan Cameron. <laughs> uh, that foul was offensive, Shelvin Mack. It comes from Foster. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. You, I love your sound effects. You are crazy. Is that not how it goes, though? I love it. <laughs> Is 
to do like guest announcer one 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 exactly. day. Like when you come to town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, talk to Steve Coon about that, please. And talk to West Wilcox, Coach Bud, Ryan Cameron. Get that set up for me. It'll be like boss man night. <laughs> like, you don't miss nothing. Right. I, I can do all the things he do. As a scoring one more for Jeff G. With the jam. <laughs> oh, jam. How, how would you call Horford again? Uh, you said what? <laughs> how would you call Horford's name again? In the game, for the Atlanta Hawks. Number 15 from Florida, Al Horford, boss. <laughs> but I'm the real boss man, Al, okay? <laughs> You're crazy. I'll throw that in, too. You do great at it. We'll have to make that yes. happen. Yes. <laughs> at the Lions shooting, too. Cal Corver. <laughs> Coach Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> Mike Budenholzer. <laughs> this is the ATL. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> You are. And how would you call Kent Bazemore? Number 24, the left-handed slender assassin, the one of these Stacey Augman, my man, Baze from Old Dominion, Kent Bazemore. <laughs> That's like, I got rough with it, though. Bazemore, you know. You're funny. You have like a little preacher to Hell it. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> I am a preacher. Say I am a preacher at heart. Better believe that. <laughs> You are crazy. Yes, indeed. Oh, my God. Yes, indeed. So, Tony, all, all in all, yeah. this deadline was very light. A lot of minor deals for cap space, luxury taxes. So, with, the, with all the deals today, mm-hmm. your mind, I'm still thinking it will be Golden State, Cleveland, probably in the finals. Golden State wins in five games. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when it's all said and done, I mean, one thing for sure, we know that Golden State will be there. And uh, the way things are going to go, yeah, I just can't see anybody else being able to match the talent. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Golden State and Cleveland. Although I would like to see the Hawks (laughs) somewhere up in there. But, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Not this year. Not yet. You know what happens to the Hawks? So, yeah, Golden State and Cleveland. They lost Demari Carroll. He he was that guy for the Hawks. Demari Carroll was the guy for the Hawks that kept them together. He was the one guy who who, who Uh, could defend and cover up their mistakes. Al, whoever's mistakes. Yeah, junkyard dog. He was the one. Yeah. Who's that guy? I I know you want to keep Paul Mills out. But Damari Carroll kept you together. Yeah, he had a he had a different mindset, and you know they call him the junkyard dog for a reason. And when he was out there, like he brought a certain energy and and yeah, and a certain toughness, and just yeah, it, it, it's you know it's one thing to if you can find a guy that can compensate in shooting, but to bring that the other stuff that you yes, know keeps the team going, and keeps them focused. <laughs> factors the unseen stats yeah. unseen plays on the stats yeah show. absolutely yeah. absolutely so and i'm gonna say this before we go today is that i feel like the hogs ownership being in flux they couldn't really pay them both going to the tax really with the teams being up for sale so i think that yeah. affected the way them, them keeping Millsap or carols they chose Mill over carol which is oh, fine but on the court yeah, it's not working too good. So, Tony, it's been good as always. I know you had a had a great, a rough day. I'm glad you still join me today. If he, in spite of, you still join me. And I will see you Saturday at the game where we can work on getting me to be the guest pay announcer for one of these games coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I got your back. We're going to make that happen. Exactly, because <laughs> I, can, I can be his job, too. I sure can. I love it. I can do his job too. It ain't that hard? And I saw the game. Post game show. Mike Conti and Dwayne Pharrell. I saw the game. You know. There you go. <laughs> I do all the reads. <laughs> you know, go Shamil Moore with a fan, uh, a Hawks member. I'm a lot of Hawks membership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, today at the Hawks shop, basketball on sale, five dollars. Some boss man sent you. This is, this is ATL. <laughs> this is your Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> you get that JR discount. Exactly. You are hilarious. It's a little my sense. 
Tell them to get the, tell them to get the promo code three one one. You know what that is? Our birthday three eleven three one one. The promo code at hawks dot com. Right. With no ticket fees. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say no ticket fees. <laughs> I know that. I right. have half the job <laughs> down already. <laughs> you are crazy. Oh my God, you crack me up. On the keyboard, <laughs> Sir Foster. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's so talented. And he our really DJ, at all the six man section, Big Tigger. <laughs> there he is, right there. <laughs> Look at my dad. Look at my dad. <laughs> you got him all covered. Yeah. So, so see, see, Atlanta Hawks, I have it already down, Pat. You won't miss a beat. I got you covered. So let's make that happen. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> that's, what, that's what's up. We are crazy. That's what's up, Mommy. Will you be good? I'll see you on Saturday, okay? Okay, baby. See you soon, and thank no you. No problem. Folks, it's Tony on the Boss Man Show. Uh, Coming up next, my man Cam Newbauer, Belmont, on the Boss Man Show after the break. We out. I'm facing a bottle for all of my problems. These Instagram models are nothing but trouble. My name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consulting, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. We're back in the Boss Man Show here. Joined by Sonia Moore talking about Atlanta Hawks trade deadline special. And then we're joined by a friend of the show, coach of the Belmont Lady Bruins, the women's team, Cam Newbauer. He's coached all around the world, folks, but he's doing good good at Belmont this year, third year there. Cam, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. I'm great. I appreciate you having me on the show, and thanks for the coverage. You're welcome, man. i got to ask you, man, uh, this year you've won 18 games already, man. More than you've won since you, I think this point of season since you've been to Belmont. So tell me this, man: what has been the key to your success this year, and how are your girls finally buying into your system and your culture in year three? Help you guys win so many games this far in the season. 
Yeah, we've got uh, we got a great group of kids, man. We really do a great group of young ladies that have really bought into the culture of Belmont. I wouldn't say it's my culture; it's more of of kind of the student athlete and the fit that we look for to, to fit Belmont as a university academically, socially, and then obviously athletically. And our players have done a great job coming in and and really sacrificing for each other. We've we've got a, a handful of young ladies that. Um, we're very, very good at their respective high schools. They were recruited by some much bigger schools than than than, than Belmont actually, and we were able to to get them to commit and come play for us. And they've done a good job of being selfless and really sharing the ball. Which you know, if you look at our stats, you'll see uh, we're you know we're ranked pretty high nationally in terms of assists, um, three point percentage. We shoot the ball really, really well, and that's because we work the ball for the best shot. And we've got a number of different weapons uh, with, with people that can really do different things on the court. And kind of day in and day out, it kind of changes on what we're looking to attack offensively with people and just sharing the ball. And so I think it's a testament to our kids and their attitude and their belief in something greater. Uh, you know, the, the full team concept about who we are and who we're trying to be as a program. And that's what's done it. And, you know, this is my third year, and we've got uh, five kids six kids I'm sorry that are juniors that have been here for three years and they've they've done a great job kind of leading the way in terms of the culture and just buying in and being great leaders for our young kids um but it, it's it's been a lot of fun I mean I I, I never imagined that we'd you know be where we're at right now and I had a great game the other day on, on national television and we, we missed a three at the buzzer win versus number one team in our league Martin and we put ourselves in a pretty good situation now to finish the, the end of the year here and see if we can finish strong. And, Coach, you played them real, real tough. And I want to tell you, great job on that, man. You'd be on that nine-game winning streak and playing those guys tough at their place like that and losing on a shot at the buzzer. So, come tournament time, man, you got to love your chances against these 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 team again if you play them again because, hey, we played them tough at their place and it came down to a shot. A make or miss yeah. shot that we we can compete with these girls and beat these girls if we play them one more time in Nashville. Yeah, that's one thing. The confidence that we played with, I was very very proud of our group for how confident they played. As you mentioned, a road game, uh, an NCAA uh, tournament type game, ESPNU nationally televised. Uh, and for kids at a small school like us, you don't get opportunities like that a lot. And for us to come out and play with the confidence we did. Uh, we were 15 of 30 from three, uh, 50% from the three point line. That's crazy. Shot 52% from three and just had some untimely turnovers at the wrong times that cost us. But, um, you know, the other thing that's crazy is 178 of those 200 minutes were played by freshmen and sophomores for us. So for us to be that young on the court with that many freshmen and sophomores playing that significant of minutes to play that way too is just a big plus for us and it, it can't help but be excited about our future. Took the most right out of my mouth, Cam. I'm thinking about your future with that many unclassed from playing that much of, the, of that game. Your future is, is bright, man, and I, I, I love that about your squad. I'm going to ask you this, Cam, as well. Being at Belmont, I can only imagine it's tough getting kids in there than at any other school in the conference, right? So what types of girls do you go after? that you want to bring to Belmont to say, hey, this is our culture, this is our academic requirement. So how do you go about targeting a quote-unquote perfect Belmont recruit for you and your team and your school? Yeah, our staff does a very good job of doing their due diligence with the student-athletes. We are the only private school in the league. Uh, Our academic requirements are greater than most of the schools in our league. There's a number of kids that we would like to recruit, but academically we can't get them in. Um, So we have to do our due diligence in making sure that early on in the recruiting process that we find the student athletes that are serious about their academics and, and their future academically, uh, not only in college, but how they did in high school, because it's easy to sit there and recruit a young lady and not pay any attention to how she is in the classroom and not, you know, pay attention to her test score. And all of a sudden you're at the, you're at her, you know, midway through her junior year, or senior year, and you find out now that she, uh, you know, might not be able to even get into school. And so you got to be careful with that because now it makes your pool of, of young ladies that you're trying to attract and you're recruiting much smaller. So you got to be smart about it. Exactly. And also for you, Cam, like you said, you guys play on national TV, ESPNU, against a great squad, UT Martin. It can only help you in recruiting that exposure right there. So I would suspect a lot of girls who didn't know about Belmont now say, hey, I might can play at Belmont now, which is good for you going forward. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely has helped us. Got a lot of text messages from a lot of coaches, AU coaches, uh, recruits. You know, we, we've 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 had a fun year. We went to Wake Forest. We beat Wake Forest on their home court this year, and and they've they've beat North Carolina, NC State, and Duke. Um, you know, we went to Wisconsin Green Bay. They're ranked in the top 25. We were up 12 in the third quarter at their place in front of 2,000 people and just couldn't hang on up there, lost by four. And, you know, so we, we've done some things this year uh, that have that have has built confidence within our program and kind of helped us recruiting-wise, uh, you know, and just put us in a position now to where if we can keep building and keep growing as a unit, the good things could happen. And that's the great thing is that we've got a, a group of young ladies that, that aren't content with where we're at. They're, they're, they're grateful for the opportunity to get better each day and they just keep working their tails off and it makes it a lot of fun to work with them. And also, Cam, if you could tell my listeners here in Atlanta some players on your roster who has helped you on and off the court be catalyst to keep, I guess, to talk about the culture of Belmont and the culture of the team concept you have. So who are some young ladies on your team who has really stood out to you for us helping you and helping the system of you and your staff who wanted them to have that great culture that Belmont has out there and show how being a Bruin is each, each day. Yeah. Well, we've got a sophomore from Alpharetta High School actually down there in Atlanta. Her name is Kylie Smith. And Kylie, Kylie's had a huge year for us. Um, a couple weeks ago, she had a game where she had 27 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists, and only 1 turnover. And she's there, local kid for you guys from Alpharetta High School. She went to Vanderbilt for her first year, had a good first year, but just wasn't happy and transferred to us. And right now she's shooting 46% from three, averaging 16.7 rebounds a game in conference. And it just does so much for her. She's a three player that can shoot it from three. She can put the ball on the floor, score at the rim, shoots a high percentage from the free throw line, rebounds the heck out of it, and can also post it up. So Kylie's been a great addition to our team. Um, off the court, you know, just a sweet kid and just, just, just a great, a great person. So she's one, you know, one that, that you guys can, uh, you know, being a local product from Atlanta. Yes, that, that I love some that. Some of the people there probably know. Um, you know, we got a sophomore, Sierra Jones from Birmingham, Alabama, or from Huntsville, Alabama, I'm sorry, who is a leader off and on the court. Um, she's involved heavily with church, with FCA, a leader in just a number of different organizations. And it, it was kind of one of the first kids that I that I offered at Belmont and came in in my first year. Uh, I'm sorry, my second year, my first recruiting class. And she's done a good job of just uh, kind of helping set the tone with the culture and with our expectations on a day to day basis, practice wise. Um, you know, she's she's a special kid. This kid led us in scoring last year as a freshman in conference, and this year has taken on a bit of a different role where she comes off the bench, but it has not swayed her at all with her passion for our team, the program, and her attitude. She's, she still does whatever she has to do to help us win, and she doesn't let whether or not she's starting dictate her role and her significance with our program. Uh, we've got a freshman point guard from Fort Wayne, Indiana, little 5'5 young lady, Darby Maggard, who is having an incredible freshman year. She's shooting 45% from three. Uh, up until a couple games ago, she had like 60-some assists and only like 15 turnovers. Which for a freshman, that, that's like a five to one turnover, assist to turnover ratio, which is crazy for a true freshman. Um, hit some big shots for us in games and just your true consummate point guard who just can distribute the ball, plays with great demeanor. Um, so, so Darby's done a lot for us. We've got a six four sophomore post, Sally McCabe from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, not far outside of Nashville. He's got great hands, rebounding, finishes around the back wheel, can also step out and shoot threes. Um, you know, just, we've got a lot of different pieces, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of players that do different things. We're, we're big on versatility and it's important to us because now when we bring people in, uh, for a sub here or there, not only is it a fresh body, but it's a completely different type of player that brings a different skill set. We've got a number of, of forwards that can play inside. Then we got a couple that can really step outside and stretch the floor and shoot the three. Uh, we've got some athletic kids that are more slashers at the guard position. And then we've got a couple others that can really shoot the three. So a combination of things um, in terms of, you know, our, the makeup of our team. But it's, it's just been great to see how such a young group can, can buy in to, to caring about each other, to not caring about who gets uh, the, news, the name in the newspaper, uh, about who gets the player of the week. And they all 
know that whoever gets what accolades, it comes from the team exactly. because of the way we play. And it's just been a lot of fun to, to you know, be with a group that, that cares about that. And then not to mention, you know, last year we had the 15th highest GPA in the entire country. Wow. Uh, this year we just had a first semester GPA of 366, which is absolutely crazy. And so I'd be willing to bet that we'll probably have a, a top 20 GPA again this year nationally. And, uh, you know, it's just coaching a, a group of kids like this. We talked about the pool we recruit from. Um, it, it's a fit. It's a big fit. Uh, we're a Christian school here. Uh, the Christian part of it's important to us. We took a nine day mission trip to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in August and, and we played a couple games, but then we did a lot of service work at churches and at schools and our players embrace that. You know, a lot of times these teams will take these foreign trips and it's all about basketball and seeing the world. And to our players, it was more about serving others and, it was just a great opportunity to, to kind of see how, you know, the other half sometimes in the world lives. And, and we were we were working with people that don't even have clean water. And, you know, the places they live in, you can't imagine. And so it's just cool to be somewhere where our kids are grateful to have an opportunity to play basketball and to go to school and, and that appreciate serving others. And that, that's what makes this place so fun. And Cam has to change their perspective for the rest of their lives, seeing – the, the Brazilian yeah. way of life and how the water's turning it, how people live in, in, in villages that's without, without electricity, no air. Just, it has to make you say, wow, when my yeah. bad day is nothing like their bad day is, you know, and, but they're still living, yeah. trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It was, it was life changing for all of us. And I think it made us closer and it made us really appreciate, like you said, that our bad days aren't bad days. We, we want to whine and complain the other night when we, to lose by two uh, to the number one team in the league, you know? And it's like, you know what, if that's our greatest tragedy right now is that we lost a game, well, then we've got it pretty stinking good. You know, we need to be a little more grateful for what we have. Not to say that, that you can't be upset losing, but you got to keep things in perspective. And that's one thing we really try to do is just keep everything in perspective to the big picture. And, Coach, to the court before we close up the interview, Coach, is this. Saturday night mm-hmm. you play Tennessee Tech and Jim Davis' team. They come up against Moorhead State, so right there in your eastern division of, of the OVC Conference over here. So, Cam, okay, tell me this. What does this team pose to you for is, you know, challenges for your girls? You think that, hey, come off that loss, they'll be going to come up with a lot of energy and play harder and get this win and say, hey, we're going to get back in this winning streak again. We love winning. We hate losing that game, but, hey, let's get wins, win some more. Let's start to get started with, yeah. with Tech. Yeah, you know, we just won 10 games in a row and then lost that. So, you know, we want to get another streak going. Uh, at home, we are we are 12 and 0 at home this year. It's a chance for us to go undefeated at home. It's a, it's an opportunity for us to, to play. We're we're tied right now for second in conference, so it's got implications with the regular season. It has major implications with seeding for the tournament. Um, you know, there's a number of things that that, that make the day important for us. It's senior day for our lone senior, so we want to honor her and send her out the best. Um, you know, they're a tough team. We we played them to double overtime at their place. And uh they did a really good job disrupting us and flustering us offensively. We didn't shoot it well, but we hung on to win by one. They've got a young lady, Samaria Howard, who averages 22, 23 points a game, capable of putting 30 up any any time. Just a very prolific scorer. And, you know, if you can't contain her, you're going to be in trouble. They, they've got a, a young lady, Octavia Hickson, actually from Atlanta, Um from Douglas, the Douglas County area, okay. uh, Douglas High School, I believe. And, you know, she, she's a sophomore. She had 23 on us the first time. Really, really good player. So we've got a, a lot of challenges on our hands with a really athletic bunch that can fly up and down the floor and really rebound the heck out of the ball. Um, you know, it's it's one of those games where, like you said, coming off the loss the other day and, and all the things I mentioned that we're playing for, don't need to say a whole lot before the game because our players are anxious to get back out, get going, and, you know, with March right around the corner, you want to try to peak right about now. And we've had a couple of good days of practice. And so if we can head into March, we're just on the upswing and keep growing and improving. I think we'll be in great shape. Yes, indeed. Well, Cam, I tell you what, man, I will see you at the tournament. You know, I'll, I'll, book, I'll book that for that week. No Hawks coverage. No, I'll be there for that week. Hopefully I'll see you then and hope your girls go go deep in that tournament and make it to the big dance, man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, can I can I ask you a Hawks question, which I heard today yes. or the other day that I said there about what's what's going on with Al Horford? Are they going to be are they going to be moving him? Oh no, nah, he's staying. The, the deadline passed today. 
He, he's staying. Oh, he was today. Okay. Teague is staying. Then they traded away Shelvin Mack to the Jazz. Justin Holiday went to the Bulls. We got back Kirk Heinrich today. Off for oh, wow. a second round That's pick. A great kid. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, Heinrich's a player, man. That's a great kid for the Hawks. That's great. Now, Kale, Nick, Nick, I'm going to tell you, in July, Al Hope is going to get a max deal. Start at $25 million per year. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. So that's crazy. He's staying. I'll, I'll, I'll take. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Because I heard on the radio yesterday, and I, I didn't pay any attention today with what was going on. And I knew the deadline was coming up. But, but thanks for educating me. And then congrats to the Hawks for keeping them. <laughs> hey, man. And, and also the Grizzlies made a trade today, too, man. They traded away Jeff Green for Lance Stevenson in a first-round pick. Wow. So. Who got them? Where'd they go? The Clippers. Jeff Green went to the Clippers. Wow. Lance came to the wow. Grizzlies. Now, the Cam, I'm going to tell you about the, the locker room in Memphis now. Think about this. Tony Allen, Zach Randolph, Matt Barnes, P.J. Harrison, Chris Birdman Anderson, and now you add in Lance Stevenson. What a locker room in Memphis we have now. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. So, yes, yeah, so I look forward to going on March 19th and seeing those guys like the- play. In that myth. Be flying that wall. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yes. And you know, my buddy's Vince Carter, so he may tell me some stuff off the off the record. So I look forward to That's hearing great. stories from Vince Carter. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, man. I'm sure. Wow. So yes, man. Hey, any NBA, anything else you want to ask me, man, while I'm here? <laughs> any, 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 no. any, any, any you need. I got yeah, you, buddy. I, I got you, buddy. <laughs> That's good. I appreciate it, Jared. Thanks a lot for having me, buddy. Hey Cam, anytime, man. Hey, good luck to you, Saturday as always, brother. Thank you, man. Have a great one. You too, now. Folks, hey. it's Ken Lee Bowen, the Boss Man Show. Coming up next is the Boss Report after the break. Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathletics.com. Consulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to do two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. John Beckler, 
BossmanRadioShow.com, Bossman Radio Network. Look, we got him back again for the boss report. He was so good to bring him back three weeks in a row. My man, true speech on the boss report. What's good, bro? Hi, what's happening with you, bro? Man, no much, man. Just amazed that these, uh, you know, fools out here still talking about Cam and Peyton. You know how America is America. <laughs> it is Black History Month. You know what it is. <laughs> And that's an understatement for sure, dude. <laughs> so, you know. But by being America, it means that we have freedom of speech to give you the box support, which is coming up next, folks. So you've been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. It's the box support. Dog, first story. Freaks. New Jersey prison teacher is arrested, dog, after having her cakes smashed to smooth the rings 20 times by convicted murderer who knocked her up twice. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. Twice, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. No, that is, that is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's all I can say, man. It's like, wow. Well, desperate Florida woman pleads for serial tax to stop taping her goats at night. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all. First of all. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who goes around with the goats, dog? I don't understand. What? Oh, dog, dog, that's just so confusing on so many levels. Like, I really don't even understand it to any degree. I really don't. Like, it's hard for me to really put that into context because I just can't understand why an individual going around raping goats. I mean, it's nasty. Like, dog. It's yeah. A goat. Yeah. Don't understand that. Like, we got horses, then we got goats. The truth is stranger than fiction, though. Every day something else is getting weird and weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder. Oh, you talking about weird. Here we go. Wisconsin man's arrested for drunk driving, blames it on, get this, the very bad fish he got from Long John Silvers. Long John Silvers still exists? I mean, I'm young with you, though. I ain't seen the one with John Silver since, like, 98. Like, they still in business? Yeah. Wow. I'm okay. All right. I, that's new to me. Like, that is legit new to me, bro. I honestly do not think Long John Silver is even talking anymore. But, yeah, it is what it is. Um, why is somebody riding around with fish up from Long John Silver? That's all the stuff, man. That's, that's the second thing. I'm like, okay, Long John Silver still in business. All right, cool. Why, though? And why are people riding around with fish around that too? Like, who does that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Florida man's arrested after slipping while riding hoverboard and accidentally shooting his cousin. Them damn hoverboards have got to be stopped, dog. Like, for real. They, they really, do. first of all, they're not hoverboards, dog. They're, they're not. They're like rollerboards. They don't hover. <laughs> Uh, no, you about to get me going off in the tail that, man. <laughs> you really are. But, first of all, people, if you're riding hoverboards, you got to be actually more careful. I don't understand how somebody accidentally shoots somebody else on the hoverboard, though. <laughs> that's all you, that's just retarded. I mean, to the full capabilities of being mentally just out of this world, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. How, how dumb can the individual be? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> About dumb with this guy. Tennessee man arrested after peeing in Walmart while shoving trout down his pants. First of all, I don't think trout is that serious of a fish <laughs> to shove down somebody's pants. <laughs> that to me is the first thing. Second of all, you're a grown ass man. How are you pissing on yourself? Why are you trying to commit a misdemeanor? And third, why is it always Walmart? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Florida man arrested and charged with assault with a deadly weapon after throwing an alligator through Wendy's drive through window over order being wrong. Why do people react so horribly? <laughs> what is the problem, though? I think it's, first of all, I don't eat fast food. So I personally think it's fast food in general that makes you angry. I don't know what they put in the food. <laughs> man, that's just a damn shame, dog, being honest. <laughs> Yeah. And where do you get a, a Gatorade that they actually have in your car and not bite you? No, I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't understand. But if you think about it, everything terrible happens at a fast food or a Walmart. That's why I don't eat fast food and I thought my dad just not shot Walmart. I try to stop stay out the way, I feel in the food. Exactly. Publix, we go to Publix and uh, you know, we try Target, you know, it's TJ Maxx, Steinmar, Marshalls, Coles, Jacksonville, not Walmart ever if we can avoid it. Kroger's no, even. No, <laughs> you know, but here we go. Ohio woman arrested after attacking husband with baseball bat for not buying her Valentine's gift. Oh, it ain't that deep, bro. Oh, my God. People, it's a day. If you have to really put all your energy and effort and focus of your relationship into this one made up Walmart holiday that was designed specifically for the purposes of obtaining money and selling cars and candy and chocolate. That's all it exists for. Though. It is not a real holiday. I promise you it's not. Nothing about this holiday is real. However, people choose to celebrate it, celebrate it. Fine. Do what you gotta do. But at the end of the day, chill out. God damn, this is crazy, man. <laughs> well, a Las Vegas man is arrested after being caught engaging in multiple Ferris wheel sex encounters before being scheduled to marry another woman that same day at the chapel. At the same day? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. People, there's a thing called decision making. But it's a process when you evaluate your decisions in life before you make it. I think it was really served a lot of you all very, 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 very well. If you started exercising some proper damn decision making. Because a lot of y'all are stupid as hell. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Just flat out, this is a serious point where in the discussion. Just stupid as hell. And it shows. It absolutely shows. Very much so. And uh, Iowa mother is arrested for kicking daughter's ass while drunk on hand sanitizer. First of all. <laughs> First of all. How much hand sanitizer is one half to drink in order to be blue, dog? I mean, Jesus, like, I don't think there's a, a safe amount of sanitizer to drink in the first place. But if there was an amount, how much is it that you have to drink in order to be lit? Because, I mean, let's be honest, this lady sounds like she was lit. How much sanitizer does it take? Real on That's fleet. what I want to know. <laughs> Dog, apparently. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's... She probably got a whole 12 pack of it and drunk it up. <laughs> and she probably did. And... An Arkansas man's arrested after blowing himself up with a homemade bomb made to protect his medical bomb. What? He made a... He, to protect his medical bomb? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yo, I understand people love to get their toke on. I get it, but this that's what's going to be. I was doing way too much in my humble personal opinion. I think it's doing way too much. Exactly. I agree with you. Uh, owner of popular Maryland Tavern is arrested for secretly videotaping women in the tavern bathroom and selling it on a adult video site. 
Um, that's an extreme violation of people's privacy, dog. First of all, I hope these prosecutors feel so it's going to move on. That's trifling. That's disgusting. And why do people like to see other people go to the bathroom? I mean, exactly. he's doing it obviously because he's a market for it, right? But my question is, why is there a market for it? I have absolutely positively no desire to see another human being drop a deuce. I really, it's nothing sexy about it. It's not attractive. It don't turn me on. I don't understand why there's a market for things like this. Why do people want to watch other people drop a deuce? Second of all, how does somebody get off and get the notion where they're like, all right, cool. I'm going to just set up some cameras and I'm going to videotape people dropping a deuce. Ew. Like, dog. Like, ew. I mean, whoa, that's an extreme violation of people's rights and privacy. And he needs to be prosecuted for the full extent of the law. And he needs his ass. This would be a nasty. Like, for real, he needs to be. He needs his ass. Peace. Exactly. Uh, Brooklyn man is arrested for smashing store windows in preparation for the zombie apocalypse. Okay, so I have a theory that the zombie apocalypse is probably going to happen. So I want to clown this dude for after watching The Walking Dead since the third one and for knowing that the government is up to something. I can't even clown too hard, dog, because the zombie apocalypse happens. He's going to be that one guy that will be sitting there like, I told you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be that guy that's just like, damn, I should have prepped it. Now, I'm not, of course, I'm joking. But at the end of the day, man, people, I don't think the zombie apocalypse is going to happen in our lifetime. It might happen, period. I don't think it's going to be soon, though. Exactly. And a New Zealand woman is arrested after bust a local politician in the face with a deal, though, over difference <laughs> in policy. <laughs> Carl, that actually started on the internet, bro. You literally <laughs> hit him with the Randy Johnson pitch, dog. Oh, my God. It was this sense and it was beautiful. First of all, I just want to know, like, the balls on his lady. She literally had, like, a pink dildo, bro. My man was in mid sense, cameras on the face and everything. Lost it, caught him right in the mouth. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen, bro. And it was, like, slow motion. It was flopping, and it just slapped the hell out of him, dog, right in mid sense. It was the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. Like, flat out, hands down, literally the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen in life. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. My man just walked away and took the L, bro. But at the end of the day, like, you have to. He's a politician. He can't go out there and throw hands in day. He took an L, but he took an L in a major way that we live on forever. Because it was on video game. Better believe it. And a Oregon man high on meth arrested after throwing rocks at cops during four-hour standoff. He must have been white, because there's no idea a black man had a four-hour standoff with the cops and threw rocks and didn't get shot. Let's just be honest. Had to be a white guy. I'm just calling the straight to say, had to be a white guy, wasn't it? Of course. Of course. Yeah, there ain't no black guy gonna have a four-hour standoff and throw rocks at cops and not get shot. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, I do know how he was going to be white. But, yeah, man, if he was black, that wouldn't happen. Well, Russian soldier opera actor wakes up to find his balls removed after one night stand honestly bro here's my whole thing this is what scares me about one night stands this is what scares me about being a single man every chick I meet dog I have a real big trust issue cause you know I'm up in the deep it's grimy around here every chick I meet even if she cold especially if she cold or she bad I'm automatically assuming there's a chance this could be a setup. so I'm leery with that dog I don't like Going over to cribs if I don't know you. I don't really like spending the night if I don't know a chick like that. If I don't do a background check on her, I ain't really trying to be close because you can't take no chances, man. Because that's terrible to wake up with your balls on a dog. I'm killing everybody. 
I mean, I'm killing everybody, bro. There's no way I would not make CNN with the amount of bodies that were racked up, bro. There's no way people are going to continue breathing if they have something to do with my balls getting cut off. Like, I promise you. Exactly. It would be, the story would go on to be told throughout the eons of time, bro. So, bro, does that count as a fourth mutilation or a half of half of mutilation? Is that a half or Nah, that's a fourth. That's a whole one, dog. Balls is just as important as the flaw, man. The ball are packaged, dog. You can't have one without the other. That's so, now, now <laughs> we're only in mid-February and we're up to four. That's four too yeah. many. Four too damn many. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, ladies, leave our balls alone. Leave our junk alone. It's not like we can go cut you off. You know? <laughs> like, like, chill, chill out. Jesus. And Chinese parents are arrested after locking daughter in shed for six years because they disapprove of her boyfriend. I think that's probably one of the most gross of reactions I've ever heard. <laughs> like, it's got to be up there in the record book. That is the definition of somebody overreacting, dog. I do not believe it was that serious. It was not that damn deep. Like, they locked her up for six years? Mm-hmm. Jeez, uh, that is wow. Yeah. And a Texas high school teacher is fired after reading an extremely explicit Adam and Eve poem in class, which got some students aroused. Okay, well, here's the thing. The Delta wants to get high school students aroused. It's high school students. But as a teacher, you have to exercise your strength and your core, and you really have to set whatever you need to minus. Like, these are still kids. Regardless of whether or not they're hormonal teenagers, they're still kids. So she should have done a better job of setting this poem and making sure that it was not sexually explicit and things of that nature. Because all these kids are different. At the end of the day, you're still talking about kids, man. You got to do a much better job of vetting stuff like that. It's sad that she got fired, but at the end of the day, she's just making a decision like that. And finally, speech. Rhode Island man is arrested and charged with assault after putting it so good on a woman that her stomach were hurting and have cramps and off-cycle bleeding. What, boy? Off-cycle bleeding is what the story says. Off-cycle bleeding. <laughs> yeah. That sounds uncomfortable as hell, bro. I think she was spotting after getting served the, the D. That's what I want to code that is the same. So he put on so good that she calls her to have it. <laughs> Abdominal intestinal cramping and quote off cycle bleeding. I don't know if that's worthy of an assault charge. Nah, that's not assault. She took the risk. I guess she bit off more than she could chew. Far be for me to ever see another man, but maybe he was just packing a little too much and she couldn't handle it. She tried to get up on the ride and maybe she just couldn't handle the roller coaster. I'm just saying. But dog, why did the ER file a report with the police about this? I, I guess he told it up to a point where they was like, damn, this must have been tough. <laughs> Cause I'm like, that's not a police offense or a crime. <laughs> nah. But damn, it's not the word. Dog, I hate to reference this, but it sounds like something would happen in, in an unnamed state. Yep. I would have to agree. I'm just saying. It's not something that happened in an unnamed state that's, that's very much loved by a certain government organization who hates the show. <laughs> wow. So, so, dog, in closing today on the Boss Report, what is your take on this week's report? Um, people need to calm down, bro. Like, the stuff in life that people trip on don't be that serious. Um, stop cutting generals off. Walmart. Well, Wal- I don't even really have to make a comment on Walmart, dog. Walmart is just all I'm say about that. And, um, people, 
can't. And I and I, and I, I, I can't stress this enough. If you're going to engage in a consensual act, and it ain't quite exactly what you expect it to be, sometimes you got to chalk up the hell. Like, I mean, obviously, the young lady had off cycle. But just that term off cycle bleeding is funny to me. It's not funny to me. It's like you said, off cycle bleeding. I don't think that qualifies as a fault because I'm pretty sure y'all is, they, they engaged in consensual sexual relations. And I don't think that's fair for him to be trying to really fault if she had an adverse physical reaction to it. I just, I just don't think that that's fair, man. I don't think, I think it was, I don't think it, as long as it was nothing, you know, forced, which it doesn't sound like it was, it just kind of sounds like maybe she bit off more than she would choose. And it kind of backfired a little bit. So I just, people just be careful. Be careful. Have fun. Be safe. But be careful. That's all I'm saying. Dog, dog the terms abdominal cramping and intestinal cramping along with quote off cycle bleeding that's one of the funniest things I've heard in my life no that's the first time we've ever off cycle bleeding before bro I don't even know what that's like I'm, wow that's one of the funniest things I've ever, ever heard ever that's one of the funniest headlines it's not funny but it's funny you know it's like really how about I say she had spotting yeah, that would have been a little less weird. <laughs> Off cycle bleeding. That is definitely some doctor's term right there. That's definitely a doctor term or something that we didn't know about. Off cycle bleeding. So <laughs> that's that. And speech. Tell us what we got going on from the ground in and see before we close up the boss for today, brother. Most definitely, most definitely, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you are anywhere near Toronto area, come to April. I'll get you exact date very soon. But we do have the information available right now on familyground.com. We will be in Toronto, T Town. We are coming back. T dot the dot. We coming to back to kicking in April. Please, the Canadian Music Week. Please show us the utmost level of respect because Toronto is a beautiful city. We love the city of Toronto. Everybody out there has been amazing. But every time we go out there, it's mad love. So we're looking forward to it, man. We humbly can't wait to get there and, and, and really just embrace the city again. I had a city embrace this, man. It was a beautiful experience. So we can't wait to go back again and do that this year. Um, <clears throat> we got some big things in the works. I can't give away too much. All I can say is people need to be tuned in to familygrind.com right now. Cooking from the underground is still going strong. I want to appreciate all the people nationally, internationally, local. Everybody that supported the record has been a really dope record, man. It's, it's been getting a great response and great feedback. Everybody check that record out. Illstreetonline.com, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, anywhere you can find music. Undergroundhiphop.com for holding us down. Also, we got more videos coming up soon. Hit up family. family got, hit up youtube.com slash FGETV. YouTube.com slash FGETV. Subscribe to the channel. Be the first one to get here when we drop that news. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you rocking with you. We got a lot more on the way, so stay tuned. Also, iTunes, iTunes uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Hit us up at Family Grind. Stay in touch and stay in tune. No doubt, folks. That's your boss from Radio Show, the boss man show with John Beckler. It's the Radio Network, BossMRadioShow.com.
Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it.